we've introduced the concept of an annuity, which is a series of regular scheduled payments. And we usually do this at the end of the month, okay? Let us not uh, beat around the bush. We do have quarterly and things, but 99% of what we do as, as the average consumer, it's going to be done on a monthly basis. Why? Well, because people get paid generally every month. So we're now going to look at a couple of examples of this process. I'm going to now look at an example. I have said here, we wish to save for a holiday. So we are saving for a holiday. Costing 50,000. You could argue that if that was US dollars, it's a very expensive holiday. It doesn't matter. It's a number. Call it 5,000 if you like. In fact, for those if you're working in dollars, go for it. But if you're working in, in other currencies, maybe 50,000 is reasonable. So now we say to ourselves, okay, let us say I'm costing that. And in three years time, right? We can get an interest on this special savings plan, on our savings plan that's offered by the bank or wherever we go no it's not the guy down the road it's a registered financial institution we can get an interest rate savings plan we get six percent compounded monthly right. how much we must we invest to fund it. In other words, what amount must we invest monthly? I'll explain why I'm doing that now. Monthly, look, there's a, we've got to make sure that they're monthly. The interest rate and the X term of X must be the same. Must we invest monthly um, in able to fund it, so as to fund it, let's say. Everybody knows what I mean. We know that it's going to 50,000, three years time, I'm going to put a bit of money away every month. Draw it out. Do not miss the trick to do so. Now I'm going to get back to this character in a sec. Zero, three years, okay, and one, and two, and three. Just one, two. There's my periods, right? That's my years. Now I say that at this point right over there, I need to have 50,000. Is that present or future? It's future is equal to 50,000. What do I need to know? I need to know X. And my interest is 8% per annum compounded monthly. So what do I do? I am being asked to find X. I go straight away to my equation. And my equation is F is equal to X times in square brackets 1 plus I to the power of N minus 1 all over i. Now let us input here. x we don't know, but future value we do. The future value is 50,000. Let me just erase that. We want 50,000. x is what we're looking at. And we can say 1 plus my interest rate is 6% is 0 0.06 as a decimal. 12 and how many periods is 3 times 12? I'm going to ring that one and ring that one. So interest is being added 36 times. It's being paid every month. Therefore, I've got 36 months that it's going to be paid on. Continuing. And then I say, okay, that is then minus 1 all over 
the same is 0.06 to the power of 12. Now, here is where I just want to stop for a moment. The calculation errors that occur here are beyond phenomenal. Because what everybody tries to do is they try and bang it all into their calculator. I can only say to you that that in all likelihood is a bad move. The chances of making an error are enormous because you're trying to remember which bracket and you're trying to remember how to input it. One mistake there is going to send you back to a zero mark for this question point. And the chances are because these things flow one to the other to the other, the entire question is going to be messed up. I'm not saying write each and everything down, but take your time and make sure when you do it, do it stepwise. I promise you the results are well, well worth the effort of doing that. Everybody tries to do it because we're all, I suppose we're all technology savvy and we all use it, but there comes a point where you have to be careful, exceptionally careful. This is it. So therefore, I now go and I say, well, how did I do it? I said basically 250 because I multiplied that across there is going to be equal to x times, and this was 0.19668. Therefore, x, I just divide through by that, correct? x is going to be 1271.10, and I rounded Two, two places. Why? Because it's money. And money we generally do. We get down to a cent. Now, that is that question. Now you can quickly say, okay, so just as an aside, so how much did we pay? This is a very important question. We paid... For how many months we paid for? Three years, 12 months, times 1271.10. So the total amount that we paid was 45, 759.49. I have put a money in front there, which I should not have. 45. Now, my next step would be to say, okay then, so, how much interest did I get? How much interest did we receive? We received, well, what did we actually get? The bank gave us 50,000. Therefore, we only put in 45759.49. The interest was thus equal to, and I keep putting that, the interest is equal to 4240.51. Okay, that's what we got as interest. Can you see that, that that's quite straightforward? All we're saying is we're saying we paid. Each one of the installments, this was our installment here, right? This was our installment. Every month. We paid it for three years, 36 months we paid it. Because we got interest every month and we got 4240.51 in interest. Let's do a, um, let's do the same problem. Okay. Let me just change back to black. Let's do the same problem. All right. But we receive 6% compounded quarterly. Same problem. We receive 6% per annum compounded quarterly. Now, be careful because our installments... I like that word. Installments are monthly. Okay, we have a problem quarterly. The interest on our payment is only every quarter.
but we are putting in every month. So thus we have to invoke the following equation. We have to change it and we now have 1 plus i nu to the power of m is equal to 1 plus i nom. Remember that's nominal to the power of n. The nominal is the one that we are given. Thus I want to change it now. Let me just drag this down. There's our formula. The new one is I want this to be monthly. The nominal that I'm given was quarterly. So I there say 1 plus I nu to the power of 12 over 12 <coughs> because I am now going monthly. So I divide my I by 12 and I multiply by 12 must be equal to 1 plus, what am I given? 0 0.06 over 4 to the power of 4. This is given. That's quarterly. Now I go ahead and I solve that. How do I solve it? Well, basically I'm going to say that I knew is going to be equal to the 12th root. Let's just see. You'd have 1.06. This is going to be 1.06136. This is that. Okay. Then I'm going to take the 12th root of this. Get the Shakespeare there. Okay. Minus 1. And then I'm going to multiply all that by 12. The answer comes out as 0 0.05970 or 5.97 percent. 5.97 is the answer. 97 percent. I had to change it because my monthly is my, I'm paying every month, I'm not putting in every quarter. If I was doing it quarter and getting quarterly, then I just work in quarters. Simple as that. So, now we know what our interest rate is. We've got it. So now what do we say? So now we do it. Now we continue in months. What do I say? 50,000 was what I'm saving towards. X is what I don't know, and my interest rate is 1 plus 0 0.05970 over 12 to the power of 3 years times 12 minus 1, all divided by I, 0 0.0597 over 12. Basically, you're going to multiply that across there and you're going to solve it. You end up with x equal to 1271.67. 1271.67 and previously, what was it? 1271. It's fractionally different. It's fractionally different. So, that is how we deal with it and we've always got to be awake so when you read these questions, take a highlighter or take a colored pencil, circle the information and look at your compounding and look at the others and say, is everything quarterly, monthly, what am I doing? They must all line up. Here's another example. Here's an example. We wish to set up a sinking fund. Okay, this is a... This is a, uh, we wish to set up a sinking fund. We wish to set up a sinking fund to repurchase, to purchase a delivery vehicle. Delivery vehicle in five years time. 
right? At an expected cost, an expected cost of 500,000. Granted, that's not going to be US dollars. Right, we pay. Uh, we pay every quarter. We pay into the fund every quarter and receive 9% per annum compounded quarterly. All right. All right. What are our installments? What are our installments? Obviously, you've already picked up what I've done here. I have mixed and I've done. We receive compounded quarterly and we pay. So now our payments are every quarter. So every three months we make a payment. Right? Therefore... We can use the formula straight away. Well, we're depositing quarterly and the future value is 500. So I say 500,000 is equal to X times 1 plus 0 0.09 over 4 all to the, and we said 4 times 5 years minus 1 over i which is 0 0.09 over 4. Can you see the 4 and the 4 tie and there's a 4 over there. All in quarterly. Solving for that you get x equal to 20.007. Just a quick little check. So how much did we pay? into the fund. We paid 2007 times how many? 20 payments of that and that is 401 420.71. And obviously that is we've got a lot of interest, haven't we? It's a long period of time, but we've got a lot of interest on that. We, and it's always a quick check. Look what you pay totally. Okay, it should be less than the value because the value you're getting interest on. On interest, on interest, aren't you? I'm now going to look at another example. Yep, we've, we're cool for this one. Here's another example. This one is a long one and it's worth doing with me. Example. We own an asset. We own an asset whose current purchase price is 500000 whatever it is. Our accounting policy our accounting policy is that We replace every five years and we use the reducing balance balance method of depreciation. We set up a sinking fund in order to finance the purchase of the replacement. Okay. Currently, in 
inflation currently inflation is approximately 6%. Six percent and is expected to be stable. Okay. The the policy, the company policy, is twenty percent per annum depreciation. Calculate calculate the monthly installment calculate the monthly installment of the annuity if we get if it yields 8% per annum compounded monthly. Now let's look at the question. We own an asset whose current purchase price, here's my delivery truck, there it is. This currently is worth 500,000. So if I buy it today, it's 500,000. Five years from now, I'm going to rebuy it. Why? Because in five years, I say that my truck has done the mileage. It's used up. Okay, we use up assets. So therefore, after five years, the truck is not reliable. It's costing more to maintain. Therefore, we are going to get rid of this and buy a new one. The general consensus is you're going to trade it in. Generally speaking, if you like the truck, you'd go and buy the same one again. The issue here is that if you think about it, I've got a truck now. The price of this truck in five years' time is going to be there. It's going to inflate. But the, the value of the truck is deflating. It's going down. We are depreciating the truck. In essence, thus, we have it looking like this. We have two things. We have now and five years. Okay. Now we've got an asset of 500,000. What happens to that asset? It depreciates at 20% per annum using the reducing balance, which is the DK. This asset now of 500,000, we want to buy a new truck. New truck is going to inflate. It's going to cost more. Right? So this is going to be worth less and this is going to cost more. You can see here that there's a gap. There's a funding gap. And the funding gap is that when I sell this, this asset, I get that much back for it. And this is what it looks like. So, this is going to be the new price. This over here is what I get as a trade-in, or often called salvage value okay. trade in salvage value or could be called book value but what's the difference the difference is this is the funding shortfall that is the shortfall in funding that the sinking fund is set up to do the sinking fund is set up to cover the shortfall in funding. That is what the sinking fund is there for.
Now we can go ahead and we can start to answer the problem. Firstly, I said here, what will a new asset cost in five years? What will our truck cost in five years? So I've got now and in five years I know it's costing more. This is going to be inflation. Inflation we said was 6% per annum and essentially it's just going to be this is 500 and this is what I need to know. That's what we're going to pay. Pay this or that's what it's going to cost. Now I say thus, I can say that A is equal to P. 1 plus i to the n, p is going to be 500,000, 1 plus 0 0.06 over 1 to the power of, and we said 5 years, I get my value of 669112, 669112.79. Obviously stop the video when you're going through these, because you can calculate them, it's just... Uh, get another page. So therefore we've got that situation now. That is what the, this is the new price. What will I get? Question two. What will we get for the old truck? Well, let's say we depreciate it, and it was 500,000, and it's gone down over 0 0.25. And the interest rate here, depreciation, we said was 20% per annum. Therefore, I say, all right, same story again, this is A, A is equal to P. And in this case, it's going to be 1 minus i to the n. Reducing balance, we use the DK formula. So it's going to be 500, 1 minus 0.2 over 1 to the power of 5. And that gives me 163840. So thus, my truck. I'm going to get back 163,840, aren't I? Thus, you can now say, my, this is what I, this is the new, and the new one was 669,112.79. And let's go back to red, or rather let's go to, to blue. This is my old uh, truck and I get for that 163840 therefore my funding shortfall the shortfall is 505 272.79 that's what we need to fund when do I want it? This must be available in five years time. Therefore, it's a future value problem. Now, the last part of this, uh, of this problem is I'm now going to... Um, to, to do it, I'm going to say, all right, my future value, put the formula down, F equal to X, 1 plus I to the power of N minus 1 all over I. Guys, write the formula down. Don't just bang the thing in. 505272.79 equal to X, which is what we don't know. Then it's 1 plus, and it is 0 0.08. We're going to get 8% over 12 because it's monthly. 
minus 1 all over 0 0.08 over 12. And I'm not going to go through the long involved process. Suffice it to say that we come out with x equal to 6876.63. And now total paid. How many paid? We pay 6876.63 every month for 60 months. 5 times 12 for 60 months is 412.597.51. That's a little check because I know I wanted 505, so it looks about right. Okay. I'm getting interest on top of that. The interest, the difference between that and that number, is it not? So, this is our monthly installment. Is that character. The next one I'm going to do is I'm going to do annuities with unknown time. We're going to be using logs for that. I'll see you in that one. Go over that one with the truck because it kind of encapsulates everything. And we're going to start getting more and more into these things now. Uh, deferred payments, end of term payments, etc, etc. Cheers. I'll see you. Have a good one. Bye.